Hello everybody! In this video clip we're going to focus on the epithelial tissues. And I typically abbreviate these as ET. We're not going to yet study the individual kinds of epithelial tissues. Instead, this is just a general introduction to the epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues are often said to cover organs and to line organs. And we're going to spend a few minutes here discussing what that really entails. Suppose that we take a big core out of your skin, and actually we go a little bit further than just the skin. So here's the core. And we could argue that this portion here represents the skin. And as we go beyond that point, we go deeper into the body. Let's just put it that way. Well, the skin, illustrated as such, with the atmosphere being here, obviously, the skin has a most superficial layer of epithelial tissue, which I'm illustrating in the blue here. We'll just use the blue color to represent where epithelial tissue is found. And so we say that epithelial tissue covers our body. Despite the fact it's really part of our body, of course, um, it's the most superficial part of the skin. Now there's more than just epithelial tissue to the skin, as we will see uh, in a little while. We also have connective tissue that makes up the skin. Now, if we look at more traditional organs, such as hollow organs, and allow me to make a quick sketch here of a hollow organ, Time to draw a circle here with another circle around it. This represents a cross-section of pretty much any hollow organ. It could be uh, a blood vessel, it could be uh, the stomach, the bladder, you name it. The uterus, we'll say one more just for the heck of it. And what we find is that all of these hollow organs are going to be lined, as we say, with epithelial tissue. And what that means is that that tissue that sits the closest to the hollow part of our hollow organ is epithelial tissue. Now that hollow part we refer to as the lumen of the hollow organ. For instance, in the case of our blood vessels, we find that located in the lumen is the blood. Located in the stomach is our food that we just ate. In the bladder is the urine that is being stored. In the uterus is possibly a baby that is developing. Maybe most of the time we hope not, but let's just say um, that for now. So the lining function of epithelial tissues refers to the fact that there is an epithelial tissue that sits the absolute closest to the lumen of our hollow organ. And by the way, these hollow organs at some point in time will also have a superficial layer of epithelial tissue. Um, we're going to primarily focus on the fact that this epithelial tissue here in the hollow organ functions in lining, this epithelial tissue here in the case of the skin functions in covering. What we'll do next then is take a closer look at the microscopic anatomy of the epithelial tissue. And so again, allow me to just use the skin Actually, let's just uh, use that orange color. And what we're going to do in a new diagram is continue with the skin here. Uh, 
with the remainder here. Being the rest of the body. And this time I'm going to illustrate the epithelial tissue of the skin more clearly with the help of cells that I'm actually drawing. And with time you will learn exactly what the shapes are of these cells. I'm just doing this quickly here. And then we have, as I said, we'll do in the red, the connective tissue. The connective tissue typically doesn't have a whole lot of cells. I'll just draw a few, not a whole lot. Might be some cells all by themselves. But what's important to remember about the connective tissues is that it contains blood vessels, which I'm drawing here in the red. We may even see a cross-section of a blood vessel here, another cross-section of a blood vessel there. And therefore we say that connective tissues are vascularized. On the other hand, epithelial tissues are avascular. They lack any blood vessels. And because of that, they are completely dependent on the nearby connective tissue. Connective tissue will always sit right nearby epithelial tissue. The only thing that separates these two is a very non, usually non-noticeable acellular membrane, and we refer to that as the basement membrane. It's made up of all kinds of protein and sugar molecules, but it is not made up of any cells, so we say it's avascular. Rarely will you actually see that basement membrane on a, a microscope slide, but you very easily can distinguish between epithelial tissue and connective tissue, and so you can just assume that the basement membrane is in between there. This basement membrane actually serves as a foundation for the epithelial tissue, making sure that the cells of the epithelial tissue stay where they should be staying and they're not slipping into the connective tissue. Another imp important feature for you to immediately notice is that epithelial tissue is very cellular. Unlike most of the connective tissues, which are not quite so cell cellular. And then finally, there are many more features, but for lab here, we'll keep it to uh, one more thing. And that is the fact that all epithelial tissues express something called polarity. Now, we're not referring to the polarity we see in chemistry, okay? We're referring here to the fact that there are two opposite ends. And in this case, we see that there is one free cell surface and the opposite cell surface attaches to the connective tissue. As you can see. So this layer of cells right here is your apical cell layer. That is the free cell surface. Oops. While the, the layer that sits directly on top of the basement membrane we refer to as the basal cell layer. Very characteristic for all epithelial tissues. So pay attention to that when you study microscope slides. Now, how does this all apply to our hollow organ? Well, very much the same thing. Imagine that I take out a chunk, let's use a different color, let's use purple. Let's say that I take a nice little chunk out of the wall of a, this hollow organ, and you could now argue that we're pretty much looking at the same thing that we drew for the, for the skin. So whether we're looking at our hollow organ, or whether we're looking at the skin, 
the arrangement of tissues is going to be very similar. Even the microscopic anatomy of the epithelial tissue will be very similar. So in the case of the skin, then right here we would have the atmosphere. In the case of our hollow organ, it would be here where we find the blood or the urine or the baby, etc., etc., etc. Now, you may say, well, what about those blood vessels? Well, realize that these blood vessels could be enlarged. Actually, let's ignore that arrow. Well, no, let's take the, the original plan. We could enlarge that blood vessel. There it is. And notice that it looks very similar to our other hollow organ. And again, this blood vessel will have as its innermost layer epithelial tissue. If it were just a capillary, the capillary would consist of just that particular layer of epithelial tissue. And in the blood vessels, we refer to that layer as the endothelium. So the innermost epithelial layer of all blood vessels is called the endothelium.